Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power to come on down the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and I'm going to jump on in on a topic that is near and dear to my heart. I love talking about Coach Prime, Coach Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes. Yes, I admit I am one who does not like Colorado. I admit I am not a fan of Deion Sanders. I admit I am not a fan of his son. I love Travis Hunter. I absolutely love Travis Hunter. And if Travis Hunter was on a better team, Travis Hunter would win the Heisman Trophy. It would be damn near impossible to keep that kid from winning the Heisman. But as it stands, they're probably at best at best, at best, at best, at best, going to go six and six. Yes, I picked them to go four and eight. I'm not backing off of that, but at best, they're a six and 16. That game against Baylor, I will give them credit, but I'm going to give them credit, but I'm also going to be honest about the credit that I give them. The credit that I give them is that they did not quit. And I appreciate that. I appreciate watching a team not quit because they were getting whipped for a majority of that game. The game was 24 10. Baylor has the ball. And and this is in the second quarter. Baylor's moving the ball at will. They get a you know, a a kickoff return for a touchdown as well. Um, So, you know, they're, they're, they were successful moving the ball pretty much whenever they wanted to. Now let's talk about it. Where were we at right here? It's 24, 10. They have the ball at their own 25, 26 yard line. And they have a play that's run to Sawyer Robertson where he's wide open and the ball is dropped right in his hands and he flat drops it. Flat drops it. That play would have gone for about 30 yards, if not more. It would have put them back in CU territory. And instead, he drops it. They don't move the ball, and they have to punt in the three and out after they had just forced Colorado into a three and out punt. That was big for Colorado because that allowed Colorado to have a chance to get back in the game because if Baylor had put up another touchdown there as they were moving the ball at will, 31-10 at halftime is a tough hill to climb. Now, ends up having next possession is a complete utter meltdown by the Baylor defense. And the Baylor defense had a number of meltdowns in this game. However, on this particular meltdown where Shadour Sanders rolls out to the right, he hits his receiver. Um, he hits, he, he hits uh, Miller. He hits Miller on a 58 Yard pass. That's so oh, maybe we confirm Omar Om, Omarion Miller. He hits Omarion Miller. Miller makes a rather remarkable play. He looks like he's been tackled, but his knee may or may not have hit the ground. At first glance, I didn't think it hit the ground. Then on replay, I thought maybe it did hit the ground, but they didn't call it on the field, so you're not going to reverse it. What you did see on replay, though, was a direct clip, right, when he managed to stay on his feet. The other defense player stands there watching like with a chicken with his head cut off. He goes down the sideline, scores, and it's 24-17. Changes the dynamic of the game because at that time, the crowd was dead. You know, clear clip, missed call by the official, should have been called back. Would have been a still would have been a a decent sized play, but would not have been a 58 yard touchdown that would have absolutely that absolutely lit up the crowd. They go into halftime, Baylor up 24 17. 
Colorado punts on their first possession. Baylor turns it over on downs at the Colorado 41. Another weird play on a on a run by the quarter on uh, a run by Sawyer Robertson that lost one yard. Didn't really like the play very much. But CU's fighting. They're not quitting, but they're not getting much. Their next possession, three and out, two yards. Baylor punts. <clears throat> then they get their then Colorado gets their best drive of the game. They tie the game at 24 on a six play 80 yard drive. And you're looking at, okay, we got a ball game. It looks like Baylor might be giving this thing away. Baylor goes three and out, punts it again. Colorado goes 10, 10 plays, turns it over on downs. I think they, I think they didn't go for, attempt a field goal from the 35-yard line because of the fact that their kicker got hurt. And they, I don't know if they trusted the other one to hit it from 52 yards, so they'd rather go for fourth and eight. I don't know. That's a decision to make. But Baylor goes down the field and takes the lead at 31-24. And now you've got Baylor's humming again. They went right down the field. Really easy drive. Not too, I mean, not difficult at all. And they force on the next possession, basically have Shador running for his damn life. Shador gets sacked on back-to-back plays. They end up having incomplete pass on third down. They punt it. And this is where... I thought Baylor really shit the bed because they got the ball back at the Colorado 26. It's one of those things where there's 354 left. You know they're going to try to bleed clock. But Colorado, regardless of what anyone may think, has explosive weapons on offense. They have weapons. Travis Hunter is the most dynamic football player in college. (laughs) The most dynamic college football player that there is right now. And he might be the most dynamic college football player that we've seen in it. Since Reggie Bush. I mean, I think that highly of Travis Hunter. I think he's unreal, an unreal talent. I don't like how he's used because I think he's going to be worn into the ground and years are being taken off of his career by playing him 125 plays a game. I don't know how many he played in this game, but he plays a lot of plays, and that's going to take years off of his career. That said, he is Incredible. Shador, I watch the Coach JB and Smitty show a lot. I see what Mac McChesney says a bunch of times. I see how Smitty rolls. I agree in large part with JB. I think Shador is in the right situation to try to make his numbers look good. Playing for his father, I get it. He doesn't do the things that you want to see quarterbacks do. He does extend. He does a lot of drifting, as JB says, so often. You can see it. There's never, it's rare that you see three-step drop, five-step drop, doing. You see, it's usually it's roll out, drift to the right, drift to the left. There's always something. And people will say, oh, well, their offensive line stinks. Well, I thought their offensive line was supposed to be so much better. <clears throat> I think we found out why. Charlie Offerdahl was starting at running back because the running backs that they put in now can't block anybody. They're awful in blocking. They're better running backs, but as far as blocking, they suck. They can't block. They couldn't block me. I mean, you watch them. They are, they whiff on blocks constantly. They're not good block. They're not good blocking running backs. So, you have that situation. Now, Shador Sanders, though, he's tough, man. I'm not going to take that away from him. He's tough. I don't think he's a top 10 draft pick. I don't. I think that you're going to, if he has to play in a real system, it's going to be difficult for him. He's not technically sound in many ways. But, you know, 
Neither is Patrick Mahomes. So who the hell knows? What, what do I know? I know what I'm seeing. I know what I watch. And I know that he is not a prototypical quarterback. He's also only six foot two. So when they talk about like who's the best quarterback in the country and quarterbacks that we draft ahead of him, I'll tell you right now, Cam Ward is six foot two. And Cam Ward plays a much more mature brand of football. Much more mature. It, 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 like you don't see the same nonsense from Cam Ward. Cam Ward is composed. He seems to always be in control with the Hurricanes. They're blowing people out of the building. So I don't want to hear. And then I'm going to, I mean, I'm sure someone from Colorado will say, well, they have more talent. Well, <clears throat> according to Coach Deion Sanders, Colorado's loaded. He, 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 I mean, this is his team. These are the guys he's recruited, the, the mercenaries he's taken from different programs as washouts. And I will say this, his wide receiving talent, his wide receiver talent is strong. He has a good, he has an overall good quarterback. I'm not going to sit here and say Shador is a bad quarterback. He's a good college quarterback. Is he a great one? I don't think so. What would he be? What would he be in the NFL? Mediocre. He'd be a backup probably, at least initially. But the quarterback playing professional football now is so bad that who the hell knows? I mean, we're looking at Bryce Young getting benched. This guy was the first pick in the draft. But again, another quarterback that play, a quarterback that played at Alabama, where you never get hit. I think that Shador shows that he can actually take hits, which is good in that regard, and that's good for him. But I don't think he's a great quarterback. I think he's a good one. He's a good one, above average to good, and he makes some tight throws at, at certain times. He throws deep almost all the time. They get bailed out on pass interference calls because he, he he's drifting in and out, out of the pocket. And, you know, <clears throat> you have receivers that on balls that are typically underthrown where linebackers or safeties or DBs are running into the receiver and it's, a, and it's a pass interference. But I think those plays are almost designed that way at a certain point. That he throws it because he's trying to draw pass interference, not that he's actually trying to complete the pass. But Baylor has this opportunity to finish the game. There's 354. They've run the ball pretty well. And they run they run they run a Sawyer Robertson. He showed that he could, you know, he's the he's the quarterback. He showed that he could run the ball. But man. I think earlier I said Sawyer Robinson was the receiver on that play. No, he's the quarterback. He's the one that missed the play. Um, who was the receiver on it? Uh, it just says that it was incomplete. It doesn't say who it was to. I, it was one of the wide receivers. It was, I think it was a running back or wide receiver. But the point being, Sawyer Robertson basically takes a five-yard loss. And you're sitting here like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? And the play calling, I thought, I thought the play calling was not to win. And I'm sitting here watching this game, and I'm, and I'm watching, and they're at the 24 now, so you you have a 41-yard field goal. Get yourself three, four, five more yards. Now you have a 35-yard field goal. Even if you don't get the first down, you need to put yourself in position to actually make this field goal. I don't trust kickers. I don't trust college kickers at all. From 45 and out, good luck. Unless you're the guys that are over at South Florida, Gramatica hitting 58 and 51 yarders in the first half against the Hurricanes. Because, the I mean, they made their three long ones, and they go to 31 yards, and the other kicker blows that field goal right before the half, which is pretty pathetic. Um, <clears throat> but overall, I did not like the play call. you got to finish Colorado. They've got weapons. One breakdown against those guys, and it's a touchdown. And when they, they and when he took that five yard loss, I'm like, oh Lord, they're gonna miss this field goal. They're gonna miss this field goal because they're not gonna they're not gonna go they're not gonna throw the ball. It was third and thirteen to twenty nine. They're not gonna throw it. They run it for a one yard gain. They run the clock. Carl calls a timeout. They kick the 45, 46 yard field goal, and he misses it. And now I'm sitting here saying, Colorado's gonna tie this game. Colorado's gonna tie this game. 
they're going to tie this game and they're going to win this game in overtime. I said it immediately. Colorado's going to tie this game and they're going to win this in overtime. Then <clears throat> Shador gets sacked on the first play. There was a point where I think he got sacked four times in five plays. Like he was sacked a lot. Um, there was, a, a, I mean, there's a couple penalties that got drawn, pass interference that was drawn on um, Travis Hunter. Another one that was uh, on offsides on Baylor. And you're like, you guys are really fucking shit in the bed here. You're trying to give it away. But then Shador gets sacked again on, on first and 10 from the Colorado 45. False start on Colorado. Now you're a second and 24. And they give Shador a 17-yard run. Like, what are you doing? But third and seven, he throws the ball to LeJante Webster, Webster for six yards. And it's fourth and one. Shador gets the first down, the fourth and one. Colorado's down to their last timeout. They call a timeout. Shador throws that ball uh, to 14. What the hell is 14's name? I don't, again, I don't know how this happened. 14, um, Will Shepard. The ball bounces off of Will Shepard's chest at like the three yard line. He, he gets somehow gets behind the DB. You're sitting here saying, Dave Aranda, you're a defensive coach. You're a defensive coach. <clears throat> and you're sitting here. Letting guys get behind your DBs when they have only one option, they gotta score a touchdown. They're at the 45 yard line. They're at the 45. You can give it underneath. Who cares? Do not let them go deep. They get a Baylor gets a break because the ball hits him on the chest and he drops it. Next play, it's the last play in. There's two seconds left. There's two seconds left, and you got one option. It's a it's a Hail Mary. But they didn't just run a Hail Mary. They ran a different type of play. They didn't really run a Hail Mary because they didn't have the receivers just bunched up running flies. They had them a little bit different. I mean, and then you look at how Baylor defends this crap. You've got two safeties lined up in the back of the fucking end zone. Why? You're supposed to line up at the front of the end zone, and you're a defensive coordinator, Aranda? realistically, and I'm not saying it's going to happen or should happen, but what happened in that game for Baylor is fireable. Coaches get fired for less. To get beat like that, where you have a man-to-man -man coverage on the receiver, he slips, Shador rolls out, chucks it down the field, he gets his arms just under it, just in time. It's a touchdown. The safety is late coming over because the safety's fucking in the back of the end zone. You have two players that are 20 yards, two defenders that are 20 yards from the goal line. What are you defending? You could give Shador Sanders a half an hour back there. You could have rushed with one and put everyone at the goal line. And it would have... You could have done that. I saw that happen with the Dallas game. Like you could have done that. And then you have the one guy who, who goes inside rather than containing Shador. Like there was breakdown after breakdown after breakdown on one play. And it makes you look like, did you guys ever practice Hail Mary defense? You're sitting here like, wow. <clears throat> and here, like, here we go. They're gonna lose. Baylor's, Baylor's giving this game away. Now, <clears throat> let's go a little deeper into it. Tie the game. All these breakdowns. Two two safeties that are lined up in the back of the end zone. You got two other DBs are, that are lined up to, are 20 yards from the goal line. You got a, a I don't know if he's a D end or a linebacker who's running, who's supposed to be containing on the outside to keep Shador from rolling out to the left. Instead, goes on the inside, the defensive end, it gets caught up, and that gives Shador enough time to throw it. Like, there were so many mistakes on that. It's just perplex. And then, the, and then the DB magically slips. And why is he in man coverage? 
You treat him like a gunner in punt in, as a punter, but you also don't line up right. Like it's just, just a mess. Just a mess, a mess, a mess. Now, <clears throat> overtime, they score. They score rather easily, and Baylor gets the ball to the one yard line, and the running back fumbles the ball and a hit by Travis Hunter. Cover the ball with two hands. Great play by Hunter. Great play. Amazing play. He's the best player in the country. This kid does everything for this team. If Travis Hunter is not on this team, they're 0-4. That's how good Travis Hunter is. They are. They don't have a win right now. He saved them versus North Dakota State. He saved them versus Colorado State. And he saved them again. He is the best player in the country. Now, will he win the high spin? Probably not, because they're not going to win more than six games, like I said, in my opinion. But, and I will tell you this, that if they had, if Baylor had scored, I would have gone for two. There's no way I'm going to let this go to another overtime. I'm going for two to finish the game. You win or you lose right there. I'm not kicking an extra point. That's just what I would have done. But it never happened. We never had a chance to see it. Now, I will say this. I will give Deion Sanders credit. They made a concerted effort to run the ball. Yes, Shador had 19 carries. I don't recall how many times he got sacked. I think he got sacked like eight times. I'm not sure. Let me uh, let me see if it says it in the article. Uh <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, man. I don't see where it shows about him, where, how many times he got sacked, but I think he got sacked like eight times. The dude was running for his damn life. I mean, the whole game, he's running for his life. Sacked once. Uh, do, 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 see here, sacked once. Uh, maybe he got sacked less than that. I felt like he got. I felt like he got sacked constantly. He said he it seemed like he was constantly running, running away from pressure. Sacked again, twice. Three times, four times. Five, six, seven, yeah, eight times. He got sacked eight times. So he has 19 carries in college football. Those are all carries. So he had 11 carries that were separate of being sacked. Now, I think there were a few that were called runs, but for the most part, they were ad-libs of him trying to escape being crushed. But I felt like they made an effort to try to run the ball, and I think that's beneficial. I think it's beneficial that they're doing that and I and, and they're not just chucking it 50 times a game. Because at the end of the day, they finished actually with 42 runs and 41 passes, but we know that he got sacked eight times, so it's really 34 runs and, and 41 passes. And really 31 runs, 34 runs and 49 passes. But that's a lot better than what they did early this year. They run the ball 15 times, 14 times. And, and I think that makes a difference. So I give them credit on that regard. I don't think they're that much better defensively. I think their offensive line is still absolute garbage. Their running game is still non-existent. I mean, two yards of carry is absolutely pathetic. You know, th- I'm sorry, the running backs were 21 carries for 63 yards. So three yard, two and a half yard, three yards of carry, not good. But when did Baylor become a powerhouse? Someone let me know. I don't want to know why people are so absolutely ecstatic like they just beat some powerhouse program. Baylor was three and nine last year. Three and nine. They stunk. And one of their three wins was against Long Island University. They lost to Texas State last year. They were garbage. They got beat by 35 by the same TCU that 
Colorado beat in the season opener. <clears throat> they lost that team by 35. Baylor wasn't good. So I don't know why there was this belief that this team became great all of a sudden. They beat Tarlington State. They beat Air Force. They lost to Utah. So what was what made people think an Air Force is one and two with losses to San Jose State, San Jose State, and a 21-6 over Merrimack? Air Force stinks. So this thought, this attitude that they just beat some great football power. No, they didn't. They beat a bum. Baylor is garbage. Baylor's bad. Yet these teams that are bad are moving the ball on them. It's a bad team that moved the ball pretty much at will. And again, Colorado was favored by two and a half in this game. They were not the underdog. And then you watch these fans rush the field as if they just won the national championship. You beat Baylor. You beat Baylor. And I'm just going to give you an example of where Baylor is ranked right now. You don't have a poll for it, but I'm just looking at compu- a computer. Let's go look at a computer ranking. Computer ranking of Baylor. Where, the, where is Baylor at? Where is Baylor? They can't be that good in, their, in this computer. Baylor is 81st in computer ranking. 81st. That's one computer ranking. Let's look at. Let's see if we can find something for this guy. Uh, another one. <clears throat> Here's another. Another computer ranking that has Baylor ranked. Yeah, let, me, let me let me do a fine because this is too much. Wow, they're ranked 42nd in this one. That's a little surprising. That's a bit surprising. I don't I don't I don't know how that is, but that's that's Sagarin rating. Another one was college pro football poll, which was that, that one. Uh, Matt, let's see what their Massey rankings say for Baylor. Baylor's in the bottom, they're like 89th in this one because there's no numbers next. So they're like 80. They're, yeah, they're in the, they're in the, they're in the, I'm sorry, they're 69th. This isn't some powerhouse and you're rushing to feel like you won the national championship. Baylor gave this game away. Baylor gifted this game on multiple occasions. They gifted it. They gifted it in the second quarter when they drop a, a pass that would have got them set up for another potential score. They gifted it again when they miss a field goal and decide not to try to finish them off. They gifted again, giving up an, a ridiculous Hail Mary. And then they gifted again when they fumble the ball at the goal line. I mean, this was gift after gift after gift after gift. This game should have been – Baylor should have won this game. But you know what? That's where I go back and I give credit because CU did not quit. They did not quit. But at the end of the day, this was brutally bad football. This was bad football. This wasn't good football. It was bad. So, you know, we're, we're, we're celebrating bad football. Again, I love Travis Hunter. I think he's amazing. But there's this team is not good. And when I hear this guy Smitty say they're a contender, Fuck out of here. A contender for what? Going six and six? He said they're a contender to win the conference. Put your money on that, Smitty. Find my podcast. I'll tag you in it. We can bet on that shit. If you want to bet on them winning the conference, bro, I will give you I'll give you a hundred to one odds. I'll bet you a hundred bucks and you pay me a dollar. Because ain't no fucking way them dudes are winning the conference. No way. 
they travel to Central Florida, who's undefeated this week, and they go to Orlando. Good luck. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when you got to travel somewhere. We already saw what happened when you traveled once. You got your ass kicked by Nebraska. Yeah, you traveled to CSU. Big deal. CSU's terrible. But, yeah, I don't want to hear it. Credit to them. They didn't quit, but that's bad college football, bro. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Come on now.